Okay, everybody. Hello. Good morning. We're going to get started in just a minute. Uh, before we get started today, my name is Brenton. For anyone who is just like happening upon this on YouTube or something like that, uh, today we're going to move through a full body yoga and movement experience. It's going to be all about twisting. So twisting, yes, in the traditional way, but also twisting, just getting all of our joints moved and lubricated in their directions to start off the week. So I hope you're all having a fantastic Monday morning. I'm gonna get my timer started over here. And uh, it'll be 45 minute practice, but an hour long session. And in the last 15 minutes, I invite you to pop any questions you have throughout your practice into the comments below. And then Ollie will read them back to me afterwards and uh, I'll be able to answer them live on air. So, Ollie's being really appropriate, inappropriate and mooning me. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get down on our backs. <laughs> so to begin with, we'll go ahead and meet down here in a bridge position. So you can do anything that feels good to begin with, but once you're kind of down there, you can start to lift your hips a little bit. Maybe just kind of Start rocking them a little bit left and right in the air. As this happens, start to breathe a little bit deeper. And rocking the hips is going to use your feet a little bit differently. It's going to use your legs a little bit differently. And then see if you can hold your hips up. It's not a super high bridge. You want your, pel your, your hip bones and your belly button to be about the same height, like one's not higher than the other. Hopefully your low back feels pretty secure, and if it doesn't, it may mean that you need a little bit more glute action there. From here, what we'll do is we'll stretch the arms up to the sky, but still keep your chest really open. So collarbones broad, front abdomen drawing down, front ribs drawing down, just kind of start working out through your wrists. Maybe just flex and extend to begin with. Nice, easy, slow, deep breathing. When you're ready, you can actually build fists with the hands. Look at your forearms and start to move your wrists around in little circles. So it's not like a full shebang range of motion here. And in fact, you can use your eyes to sort of assess like, Okay, how much movement is actually happening in the forearms? And could I get the forearms to have a little bit less movement so that I know then that the movement is just coming from my sweet little wrists? Let's see from here. What if we interlock the hands, pressing the palms and the wrists straight up, but again, keeping the shoulder blades down, the collarbones nice and broad. And then feel your front ribs draw into your body as you begin to stretch your arms long towards the overhead position. And the overhead position, uh, like maybe it comes down to the floor by your ears, but maybe it doesn't. Nice, slow, deep breathing. As you feel ready, we'll lift the arms back up, relax them down, hips down. Anything you like before we move on. And then let's go ahead, interlock the hands behind the head, curl the elbows in, press your feet down and forward. That should get the lower abdomen sort of humming on for you a little bit. Lift up off the shoulder blades. So turning on the muscles on the front of the body, relax the head into the hands and breathe here. So keep pressing your feet down and forward. Feel that the front ribs are drawing down to lift the chest, drawing down to lift the chest. Soft, easy breathing. As you're ready, release and relax that all the way down to the floor. So option to continue working right here, or you can draw your legs up. When you draw your legs up, roll your tailbone off the ground. That should do the same thing that the feet pressing down and forward did with us before, where it turns on the lower abdomen. Lift up off the shoulder blades, relax your head into your hands here. And from here, we're just gonna kind of start moving around in the hips and legs. So twisting just a little bit to one side and then the other. Think of this as just like tiny little movements. You wanna try to move your low back, your pelvis and your legs all as one neat little package. 
and hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit of nuance in all the different belly areas that are turning on. So as you feel ready from here, relax your legs down and relax your head down. Now keep breathing nice and easy and soft here, soft jaw, soft face. We'll go ahead and come up again. So legs, torso, and then this time as we twist the legs a little bit over to the right as a package, lift the chest straight up to the sky, and then turn from the abdomen over to the left a little bit. Come back to center with the chest, come back to center with the legs, go straight to the other side. So over to the left with the legs, straight up to the ceiling with the chest, and then from the abdomen, turn a little bit to the right. Come back to center with the chest, with the legs, release the legs down, and chest down. Whee! All right, so we just did a lot. I'm gonna say, let's do this all one more time, and you decide where you tap out in terms of complexity. So you can do feet on the ground, you can do legs up, you can do twisty in the legs or twisty in the chest. And we'll just kind of go self-guided here. So whatever feels advised to you. And it's here that I'll just kind of preface all the movement of this class with, you know, find, always try to find some place where you're challenged, but you're not overwhelmed. You're not in pain. If you need to back out, back out, do less range of motion or do something else entirely. Those are always going to be additional options to what I might suggest or recommend throughout practice. And so really feel free to go wherever it feels advised. Alrighty, so when you're finished, let's go ahead, come all the way on up. We'll come to hands and knees, tabletop position, where again, we can just kind of start moving around in some free self-guided movement. Maybe some cat cows feel good for your spine. Maybe some barrel rolls feel good for your spine. That's where you're kind of rolling around in the rib cage. Just take this time to move in your trunk. As you feel ready, let's lower down to the forearms. Keep the elbows narrow. You can have your hands wide or clasped together. That's your choice. And then tucking the toes, lift the knees off the ground any amount for dolphin. This feels like a lot here. You can always take breaks. I'll recommend taking the feet nice and wide, popping all the way up onto the toes so you can really get the pelvis up, tilted away from the back of the head. Feeling the front body draw into the back body, but that's after the spine has gotten long. So if your spine is not long, your front body's probably already pulled into the back body, maybe a little bit too much. But once you get the spine long, then it's like, okay, get everything pulled into the back body, press out through the forearms. Let's figure out how we want to come to a standing forward bend. I'm going to come up to the hands one at a time, but you can take the knees down and then press up. So our first standing forward bend at the back of the mat, maybe you like your feet wide, maybe the floor seems far away, but you have like an ottoman nearby or you have your legs right here you can kind of perch yourself up on. And just kind of swaying out here a little bit. We'll take a nice side stretch through the spine to begin with here. So front body into the back body and then kind of freezing the pelvis down to the feet. We don't want that to have very much movement as we walk over to one side. You can use the floor, you can use your legs. Again, a, a piece of furniture is always great. And going to the other side. And as you feel ready, coming back through center, deep bend into the knees, weight even in the feet, front to back, left to right. Roll the spine all the way on up. Set the feet however you like them. I'm gonna say like right underneath the hippies there. Hands onto the pelvis, move your pelvis. Forward, backward, tuck, untuck. This is information, it just tells you like how easy is it to move in all of these areas. Some type of movement may feel very um, normal, habitual, like you do it all the time. 
See if you can get the pelvis to just be nice and upright over the knees, knees over the ankles. Move the hands up to the ribs. Same thing, the ribs can tilt up and back. And again, you kind of see like which way feels more normal, let's say, quote unquote. And by normal in this instance, I just mean like more habitual. And then you take the ribs <coughs> right over the pelvis there, chest nice and broad and open. When you set your hands down, can you get your thumbs to point forward from, not from like you doing anything in the forearms, but just by the way that you set your shoulders up here. And from here, we'll just start chin turns to the left and to the right. And you can just kind of start moving on your own here, setting the rest of the body nice and strong against this action, trying to feel that the ears are lifting evenly from the torso the whole time. So we're starting the twist right up here in the cervical spine. Coming back through center with the chin, what if we inhale, reach the arms all the way wide and up, and as you feel ready on the exhale, slight bend in the knees, hinge from the pelvis to come forward, forward fold. Let's walk our position forward to our first downward facing dog. Press out through your hands, spread your shoulder blades nice and wide. Any movement that feels good here. Same instructions for dolphin. You want to get your spine nice and long. Your legs are levers of your pelvis. So if your pelvis can get longer away from your head, you might need to do something with your legs to help get that to happen. As you feel ready, we'll shift the position forward towards our first plank. Try not to grit in your jawline here. Press out through your fingers. Feel your shoulders. Feel your body as one solid piece. Let's go ahead, lower down to the knees here. Slowly bend the elbows, lowering all the way down to the ground. Once we get down here, what if we tent the fingers wide outside the mat? And to begin with, we'll just start some shoulder rolls. So rolling the shoulders a little bit. Set your neck in a position where it feels okay. And hopefully your low back feels okay here. So turning on a little glutes, a little abdomen, if your body proportions are such that you kind of have like a little bit of extra stuff going on in your belly and you don't actually like being on the floor, try propping yourself up like putting a pillow underneath your pelvis or something and that can sometimes be really um, more comfortable. So let's meet with the shoulders rolled back, the elbows rolled up, push down through the pads of the fingers to roll the chest off the ground any amount and roll back down. And just keep moving on your own, a little free-flowing movement here. Trying to feel yourself nice and connected from the tailbone out through the crown. And if you're feeling any pinching, shortness, tightness in the low back, it may mean we need a little bit more glutes, a little bit more abdomen. And in general, we need to commit to this principle of pulling the front body into the back body. Like a ripple effect here from the lowest abdomen all the way out through the crown. Let's go ahead and meet with the hands back underneath the elbows. Shoulders rolled up, press up to the knees. Tuck the toes, lift the knees off the ground, downward facing dog. From here, we'll push off the hands one at a time to walk all the way back to the feet. Forward bending at the back of the mat there. Bend into the knees, slow motion, roll yourself all the way on up. We'll go ahead and reach all the way up with the arms. Bend the elbows, take the hands down by the side. Set your pelvis, your ribs in neutral, your shoulders as open as you can. Start with your head turns again, chin to the left, chin to the right. Keep moving like that. And now just like consider that the position is frozen from your abdomen down to the floor and you'll actually use some of your muscles to hold it in that position. As the next time you turn your chin to the left, follow it with your ribs. So ribs forward, chin forward, chin to the right, ribs to the right. And so that's it. So we're just building on a little segmented twist and trying to feel the whole torso as a unit. So you're, you're moving the front, the sides, and the back of you all together, 
kind of prioritizing rotation more than you're prioritizing like flexion or extension of the spine. See if you want to add on here, the next time you turn chin to the left, ribs to the left, press down through your feet, pelvis to the left, and then pelvis to the front, ribs to the front, chin to the front, chin to the right, ribs to the right, pelvis to the right. So here we go, just a couple more times like that. And after this last one, on the inhale breath, reaching all the way out and up. On the exhale breath, slight bend into the knees, hinging forward at the hips, walking ourselves back forward, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, shifting the position forward towards plank, top of a push up. Breathe, be nice and easy here. Body's nice and long, as long as you would be if, if you were standing. Dropping the knees down to the floor. Bend the elbows lower slowly. Once you come all the way down, tent the fingers here. Outside the mat, we're gonna to return to that rolling cobra. So pressing down through the finger pads, lift the chest any amount, and down. And just kind of flow a couple of times with the intention of connecting the experience from the lowest part of the abdomen all the way up through the head. And then see if you can hold in this next position whatever you're able to create for yourself. Without pinching in the low back, can we start to kind of swim in the legs? So lifting one leg up, then the other, using the muscles on the backs of the legs here, the glutes. Continue to feel the front body pulling into the back body. As you feel ready, legs down, hands back underneath the elbows. Let's go ahead, press up to the knees and downward facing. Continuing to move on. This time we'll step or hop the feet forward. So you decide what you're prepared for. Take your time, hop or I'll choose to walk. If you're walking, you'll pull your hands up whenever you need to, to create the space for the feet to come through. As you breathe in here, we'll come to our first kind of halfway position. So stretching out of the pelvis, any amount, trying to get the low back nice and long, abdomen up, chest open. I always take my arms wide here just to encourage that nice open chest. As you exhale, forward fold. One more time like that. Hands to the pelvis, reverse hip hinge up. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, bend the elbows, hands down at the side. One more time, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, hinging over the legs. This time, stepping the left foot back, knee down, top of the foot down. Come on up to a low lunge, where you're 90-90. You're over your back knee, kind of vertically, from here, work in your pelvis and until you can feel that you're setting your pelvis evenly between your legs and between your armpits. If you need more cushion or if you don't like being on your knee, just take your knee off the ground. Okay, so this position can feel really pushed forward. We wanna feel it all hugged in, zipped in, pulled back, starting at the, at the pelvis, left frontal hip bone in, abdomen in, front ribs in. From here, what we'll do is we'll stretch the arms forward, but keep them plugged back into their socket. Feel your whole torso nice and steady. As you now inhale, open the arm and the chest to the right, and come back to center. Just doing that two more times. And again, trying to feel that whole torso nice and full and complete, let's say. The front of the torso, the sides of the torso, the back of the torso. When you're finished, hands down, back foot forward, forward fold. Come up halfway, hands to the pelvis, come all the way up. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, bend the elbows, hands down by the side, chest open. Set your feet however you like for chair. 
So you bend into the knees. You got a little bouncy here, so you can start to feel joints moving, lubricating at the ankles, knees, and hips. So if you feel like too dominant in one area, sometimes the knees are overly dominated when the hips don't move right here. So try to get like hips moving means belly and thighs close, far away, close, far away, close, far away. That's hip movement. As you feel ready, tip over the legs, forward fold. Step the right foot back, knee and top of the foot down, come up to lunge. You're in the 90-90, you have a moment to set your pelvis as evenly as you can. If you don't have a mirror, it's hard to see. So you just kind of got to feel her out there, like what might be, oh, there it is. That might be even between the legs and the armpits. And then feel yourself pulled all the way up and back so you're nice and vertical, arms forward. Feeling the arms plugged in as you're ready. Open the left arm and chest to the left, and then close. Let's do this two more times. And close, coming all the way down. Step the left leg back, plank position, top of a push-up, hold. Feel your shoulders, feel your body. As you feel ready, knees down, bend the elbows, lower slowly. As you come down one more time, tend to the fingers, elbows roll up, shoulders roll up. Take a couple of those like nice chest lifts just to kind of re-educate that, especially if you're someone who normally finds the low back really triggering in back bends. And then again, let's hold a position uh, in the open position, swing out through the legs. And now we have an option, right leg lifted. We're gonna see, can I keep my ribs kind of as they are, but start to twist the right side of the pelvis open away from the floor any amount, and then back down. Left leg lifts, left side of the pelvis rolls off the ground, trying to keep the ribs out of the twist for now. Back down, let's do that one more time on both sides. And back down. As you feel ready, hands back underneath the elbows, <laughs> lift up to the knees, and downward facing. Okay, feeling the low back, this is kind of the moment of truth because this is an opposite position, the folding position. So we can see how successful we were just then at keeping that low back nice and engaged. You decide how you wanna come forward. You can step, you can hop, take your time. When you're ready at the top of the mat on the inhale, we float up to the halfway, trying to get ourselves nice and long out of the pelvis. And as we breathe out, fold. One more time, halfway. Hands to the hips, press down, come all the way up. Inhale, reaching wide and up. Exhale, bend the elbows, hands down. One more time, reaching up. Exhale, hinging forward at the hips. Stepping the left foot back. Again, knee and foot down to the ground. You know you can modify and come to a higher lunge if you like, but here we are. So find your lunge first here where your pelvis is like neutrally set between your legs and your armpits as best you can. Maybe even stretching the arms forward and then you decide if your shoulders can take more flexion. Flexion in the shoulders means that you're not moving elsewhere. You're not moving in your pelvis or your ribs or your spine. Feel your glutes turned on to support this action. From here, what we'll do, hands down, especially, particularly left hand down. We're gonna peel open into the twist on that left arm. So spinning that arm open, like a good base of support. Imagine this arm was gonna take you into a side plank here. So you kinda gotta lean back into that left shoulder blade. You gotta take all the contents of the abdomen back Maybe even you tuck the back toes, lift the back knee up off the ground for that. 
And as you feel ready, right hand down, step the back foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, widen the arms. On the exhale, hands to pelvis, come all the way up. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, bend the elbows, hands down. One more time for chair, set on down. A little bouncy. Little bouncy, getting everything turned on nice and easy does it. Tipping over the legs, forward fold. Stepping the right foot back, knee and foot down to the ground. Come up to the low lunge to begin with. So you have some time here to feel and set your pelvis in neutral. When I say neutral, that's between the legs. That's harder for me to feel. But then between the armpits, that gives it away because it's like hip bones up to the armpits. Is that the same on both sides? And pulling everything back, you decide. Arms forward. You can challenge the flexion. Only go as high with the arms as you can stay neutral with the rest of the, of the form. Okay. Taking the hands down, right hand to the floor, kind of leaning back, open there, as if that right arm was going to support us into like a side plank. And feel here like it's hard to discern the spine in moments of extension or flexion. We just want it to lengthen out from the pelvis and rotate. Before, if you did the knee lifting, toes tucking, you can try that, see how that feels. And then left hand down, right foot forward, a little bit wider. Heels in, toes out, bend the knees enough that your belly sort of falls onto your thighs there, a little happy squat. Pulling your abdomen up, grab opposite elbows. Stay here or begin to lengthen the system of the arms more overhead. As you feel ready, hands down to the ground, step the feet on back, plank pose. Feel the position, collarbones broad. As you're ready, lower down to the knees, bend the elbows lower slowly all the way to the ground. From here, prop yourself up to your forearms, elbows down. Same as before, feel your whole spine connected from tailbone to crown. Breathing in. As you breathe out, curl everything in. Maybe the pelvis goes off the floor. And then keep moving back and forth like that. That low back likes to stay in sort of like a back bendy position. So really on this exhale, as you're curling everything up, really try to take that back bend out. Tailbone curling down to the backs of the knees. Keeping the shoulders over the elbows. This next time as you curl in, walk the knees forward one at a time, pop yourself up to the hands. So here we are, we're in tabletop position. Set your hands and knees so that your spine is long. And then from here, we'll have the right arm be a nice base of support for us as we inhale, reach the left arm up and exhale. We're gonna just kind of thread it, reach it under, but we'll keep flowing. So we'll inhale, go up and we'll exhale, flowing under. We want to start to feel again that right arm be like a nice base of support for us as if it were going to take us to a side plank. And in fact, it will. So as we open, take the left hand to the waist, step the left foot back. You can even toggle the right knee open a little bit, the right leg open a little bit. So just feel yourself in this modified side plank first. Use your glutes so you can get your pelvis over the right knee. Use your abdomen to pull in, feel your whole torso, 360 degrees. If you want to lift the left leg, you can. And just breathe here. Just try to feel the whole position. Maybe you add left arm reaching up. As we feel ready, left hand down, left knee down, tuck the toes, up and back, downward facing dog. And this downward facing dog, walk the hands all the way back to the feet. Bending over the legs at the back, bend the knees, slow motion, roll yourself up. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, bend the elbows, 
take the hands down. We'll move forward on the mat with balance. So if hands onto the pelvis, flex the left hip, pull the leg in front. Back is neutral, pelvis is neutral. If you have something to hold on to around you, you can use that. Go ahead, step around forward. Right hip flexes, the leg pulls up. Trying to keep ourselves nice and vertical so we're not counterbalancing with our bones. Taking that forward. So now we're kind of in like the middle of the mat. From here, we'll just work on the hips a little bit. So we'll pull the, let's to begin with, the left leg up. We're gonna go ahead and tap the heel in front as we bend the right knee any amount. The pelvis goes straight back. It's not sashaying out to one side or the other. As you're ready, pull the, right le the left leg up, and then we're going to tap it back. It's gonna be almost like a lunge. So you kind of decide, like, what are you ready for? And then we're gonna pull the left leg up. This time we're gonna step it out to the left side, bending that right knee any amount. Again, pelvis is going straight back. Pulling the left leg up, this time it's going to go back and around to the outside of the right leg, kind of like a curtsy squat. Do we got it? Let's do it one more time. So left leg up, tap the heel forward, bend the right leg, pull the knee up, step the leg back, any amount, like a lunge, pull the leg up, tap it over to the left, bend the right knee, any amount, pull the leg up and take it around to the outside. Hold in this curtsy squat, so pelvis back so your knees feel okay. Lengthen the left arm forward, puff up your back. Bend into the left elbow to bring it towards the right knee for a little curtsy squat twist. So filling the back body up, the ribs to the back wall. If you wanna add the right hand to stack and turn the chest, you can. As you feel ready, coming all the way up, left knee up and left foot down. How do you feel? Feel it definitely in my right leg now. Okay, let's keep going. Right knee up, tap the heel forward, bend the left knee. Right knee up, tap the foot behind, almost like a lunge. Right knee up, step it to the outside, bend the left knee. Right knee up, swing it around, the behind to the outside of the left, bend, curtsy squat, one more, forward, behind, to the side, and around to the back, to the outside, as this happens, settle the pelvis back, a little curtsy squat here, Reach forward with your whole chest, right arm forward. <laughs> Fill up your back body, bend into the right elbow. Here we go, maybe we stack for a little prayer twist. As we feel ready, coming all the way back through center, right leg up, walk it forward, left foot by the right foot. Here we are on the inhale breath, reach all the way up. On the exhale breath, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Step the left foot back, low lunge again, knee down, top of the foot down, rolling ourselves up, feeling neutral pelvis, neutral spine. This time, hands to the, to the shoulders. So you're just cupping your upper arm bones, moving your elbows around. Now this could be a very good choice for you. You could also return to either of the two lunge twists that we did earlier. If you feel like you're okay for a little bit more, what we'll do from here is take the left elbow towards the right knee without twisting in the pelvis. So the pelvis is trying to stay back there in that same lunge. Once you've got the elbow to the knee, hands maybe stack, prayer twist, pull the front body into the back body. If you like, back knee can lift off the ground any amount. As you feel ready, I'm gonna take the hands to the floor to transition, bring the back leg in. You can transition a different way if you like. On the inhale, let's try the halfway lift just to find that neutral. Strong legs, hands to the hips, come up. Inhale, reach the arms. Bend the elbows, hands down by the side. 
Inhale, reach the arms up. One more time, elbows down, forward fold. Let's go ahead and step the right foot back, knee down to the ground, top of the foot. Here we come to that low lunge. We try to set our pelvis up evenly between the legs, between the armpits. Here we are. Hands to the shoulders, move around. And again, just try to move in your shoulders, not in your ribs, not anywhere else. I can actually feel this reverberate all the way down through the front of the right thigh. So I can feel a nice stretch through that right quadricep. Taking the right elbow, if you like, to the left knee, try to hold the pelvis in that twist or in that uh, lunge. You can add the hands to stack, twisting open. You know that you have the option here to tuck the back toes and lift the knee, only if it feels advised. As you feel ready, hands to the floor, step the back foot in, ground down, come all the way up to stand your favorite way, bend the elbows. We'll do our curtsy squats one more time. So hands onto the waist, right foot behind, left foot behind. We'll just keep going like this. If you feel like you wanna boost up your energy for the rest of the day, free your hands in front, kind of like robot arms, and change in a hop. Next time you come over to the left, come over here, take your twist. As you feel ready, come all the way forward, reach all the way on up. Take the hands down to the waist, continue to go. If you wanna continue with your hops, This time as you come over to the right, take your twist. As you feel ready, coming forward. Here we are, feel your legs, your sweet little heart. Arms up. Coming all the way down, hinging over the legs. Hands down, stepping the feet back. Downward facing dog, just feeling that stretch. Lowering the knees down to the floor. Tabletop position, find that quadruped. Here we go, on the inhale, we're gonna reach the right arm up. On the exhale, we're gonna thread it through. I'm gonna keep going like that. And imagining that left arm to be a nice, strong base of support for us, so that this next time when we reach the right arm up, take the hand to the waist, Step the right foot back in line with the hand. Maybe toggle the left knee out. Use the glutes here to find security in the pelvis. Feel still from pelvis to armpits. Want that to be an even experience on both sides. If it feels advised to float the right leg, you can. You can float the arm as well. Feeling the torso full on all sides. As you feel ready, lower that all the way down to the ground. Woo, we made it. We're gonna go ahead and all the way down to the back. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I just saw my notes. Not all the way down to the back. Come to a seat. Okay, come to a seat and come to a wide-legged seat because we haven't done so much abduction away from the midline. So here we are. We're we're in a wide-legged position. We wanna to try to have our legs neutrally rotated. So kneecaps up, toes up. What we'll start out with here, I'll give you the side view, is leaning back. When you lean back, you're leaning back at the pelvis and you're letting everything kind of flow up in that same line. And we're gonna to try to free the pelvis in some cat-cows. And this is your time to just kind of experiment and explore like, do you have a lot of movement available? Do you not have a lot of movement available? That's valuable information because if you don't have a ton of movement available, why, why progress 
right? This is telling you, hey, this is my progression. So <coughs> from here, what we'll do is we'll just kind of find the position where our pelvis can, uh, can be upright in line with the spine. So if you can get all the way up with hands unsupported, this is a lot, this is like 90 degrees. So don't think that this is like, you should just be able to do this if you don't practice it all the time, right? So kind of figure out like, where are you? Do you have hands supported behind you? Do you have hands on your legs? And we'll start here with hands behind and we'll just kind of swing the arm, uh, like the right arm around and kind of twist over and then back and then the left and back and the right and back and the left. So just kind of keep going like that on your own and you'll notice like how everything is connected, right? So try to keep your pelvis pretty much like out of the movement and keep going like this, but if you feel like, okay, I got the upright position and I can do it without hands supported, have the hands behind your head, feel yourself nice and lifted, and then just turn from the rib line. So keeping the twists nice and super active this morning. I think we'll feel amazing afterwards, that's my hope. As you feel ready from here, go ahead, take the legs together. If you wanted to like windshield wiper, butterfly, you're at home, do whatever you like. Now we'll come all the way down to the back. Okay, to begin with down here, let's pull the right leg in, hug behind it. If you can't reach for it, hopefully you got like a yoga strap or like even a hand towel, you know, you can just kind of hold on to that instead. The leg does not need to be straight. I'd rather like the chest be open, collarbones broad, all of that kind of stuff. And then from here, we'll just start pointing and flexing through the foot. Now you can see, you can look at your fore, fore leg and you try to keep that really still. When you flex through the foot here, now, keeping the foreleg still all the way out to the two ankle bones, start to roll the foot slowly around its range of motion. If you haven't done this before, you might be surprised at how sensational this is. Like the first time I did this, I was like, holy crap, holy crap. Do both directions. So this is twisting too, right? It's not like how we think about twisting in yoga, but it's moving the joint through its rotational capacity. Go ahead, switch your sides. And my hope is that between everything that we did today, that we feel like we did kind of move all of our joints through their rotational capacity. So hopefully you're already twisting through that left ankle. Keep going. Maybe just like three or so rotations on each side. And then a super yummy twist on our back to end our movement practice. So what if we lengthen the arms long overhead, keep your ribs drawing down toward your pelvis, pull your knees into your abdomen, from here, we can roll over onto the left side. You can use your left arm as a pillow or if you have a yoga block, you can use that too. With the right arm reaching straight out in front of us, what we'll do is we'll do a round the world twist. So move the right arm around the back of the head over to the right side of the body. Hopefully you don't run into furniture or anything like that. If you do, just take the arm higher and keep moving like that. So the arm, the shoulder is moving through a full range. and it's moving the torso with you. It's funny because I have this whole room that I could be doing this in, but 
because of the camera angle, I have to be like super like tight into the tight into the fireplace. Go ahead and come to your other side. And by the way, if you find like a really juicy spot there, like a nice stretch in your chest or anything like that, you can always pause there. And as you become equal on this side to that of the other, go ahead, come on back. Maybe just plant the, the feet on the ground, pick your hips up, scooch them down and try to weight the pelvis so that the frontal hip bones draw down into the body rather than them sort of lifting up and creating a lot of space in your low back. I want your low back just to be in its natural curve. You might even like press your feet down and forward to feel that happen. Maybe you let the knees rest in on each other. As you feel ready, lift your chin, your head off the ground, interlock your hands behind the head, release your head into your hands, your hands are a hammock. It's a windy day. And you just let the hammock blow your head to one side and then the next. Again, feeling the torso stay intact, front of the body to the back body. Go ahead, lengthen your head back. Set your head down on the ground or a pillow so that your chin is tucked and your forehead is level with the ground. And find a position to rest for your arms, for your legs. You could even rest in a seat or on your side. But this is really a, a, a time for the nervous system to sort of digest, figure out what just happened. My hope is that after this 45 minutes of movement, our nervous systems already feel pretty safe. Being at home, you know, that's usually a pretty safe place for us, you know, unless we're like fighting with our loved ones or like there's something crazy going on. But even then, see if you can just kind of drop into that sense of safety. Let that sense of safety permeate pretty much everything in your body, like how your bones are set, how your muscles are accepting the support of the floor underneath you. Now, before coming out of this position, what if we just took a nice full inhale through the nose all the way down into the abdomen? We just let that breath fill us up completely and we let the breath finish on its own without us interrupting it or stopping it. At the very top, you're a full balloon and it's okay. You can hold there for a moment, feel your heartbeat, Feel the movement in your vascular system. Then, without an emergency, without it being an emergency, open your mouth, gently release the breath, exhaling out. And let that exhale have the same quality of the inhale, nice and slow, nice and long. It finishes on its own. And at the very bottom, you do the same thing. Or it feels like an emergency, take your next inhale. Call to mind like, you know, a second hand ticking on a clock and that's the fingers, that's the toes, just kind of ticking, tick, tick, tick. Slowly let those little ticks of the fingers and toes turn into hand and foot stretches, finger and toe stretches, wrist circles.
maybe even arms reaching long overhead. However you like to come on up to a comfortable seat. Before we launch into our Q&A, just holding here the seated position just for a couple of moments, seeing if you can get yourself nice and lifted, closing the eyes. This is where the thinking likes to pick up and be like, okay, what do I gotta do? I gotta go do this, I got breakfast, I got commuting, I got this, I got this, I got this. And it's not that that's bad, but it's a good practice to just kind of cut off the momentum and say, you know what, it's okay for me to have the thoughts that are telling me to go do things, but I don't always have to follow their command. And even just this one little minute of us sitting here, just kind of watching what happens will help set us on the right path of us being the master of our thoughts and not the other way around. Okay, so I thank you so much for joining in this morning's movement practice. We can go ahead and launch into a little Q&A. So if you still have some time or you're gonna go hop in the shower, just leave this on and you know, there's lots of good information here. Um, that's actually what I'm most excited about with these live streams is the Q&A portion of it because there's so little that you can actually explain and work through in class. And I know in my own movement you know, journey as a former couch potato, it's taken me a lot of questions and a lot of confusions and a lot of, oh, I think I get it. Oh, wait, no, I really don't. Oh, yeah, no, I think I get it. Oh, well, I clearly don't. You know, and you go through all of this year after year after year, and you sort of need guides along that path to help you figure out sort of where those misconceptions are because we all have them. So if you have questions, please drop them into the chat or the comments below. I'm going to have Ollie monitoring that and if um, I see any come through, I will answer those in real time. And for today, what <clears throat> for these like initial live streams as we're sort of like building up this process, what I'm doing is I'm collecting the questions that I get a lot in studio classes. So a couple of questions that have come up for me in the last week have been, uh, one has been a question about developing hip flexion when there's cramping. And it seems that I've gotten this actually quite a lot over the last few weeks. As you know, hip flexion is actually what we're doing right here in the seated position. It's where <clears throat> the thigh bone and the abdomen move closer together. And sometimes when we do that, you can feel a cramp or a pinch in the hip flexor there. So, there's a lot of things that can be going on. And um, ultimately, we are each responsible for the troubleshooting, the trial and error, and figuring it out. Uh, but I don't want to leave us there, even though that that's sort of where the, the answers start and ends, is that like we are, we are, we are responsible for our, for our bodies. Now, <clears throat> in terms of ways that we can start training this, is the first thing I would say is, there's lots of different positions that we can be training hip flexion in. We train it in standing when we do like, you know, as we walk from the back of the mat to the front and we lift one leg up. But sometimes that's, there's a, other components in there that other variables that are adding complexity that maybe don't need to be there, like balancing. And when the balance is in question, our joint positions are kind of sloppy. Like the pelvis is just doing anything it can to keep the leg lifted and the spine is doing anything it can to keep the leg lifted. So you can train hip flexion in a seated position, like so. This would be like a variation of sort of like a boat pose. And so when you're training that hip flexion, the, 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 um, the theory behind it is like, well, get your spine out, get your low back out of flexion, get your low back away from doing this and figure out what do I need to do? Do I need hand support? Do I need legs wider? Do I need knees more bent? Do I need to put myself up on a, on a cushion or a chair and work this there? And then if I wanted more flexion from here, it's as simple as, okay, that's more flexion, taking the heel up off the ground, but doing that without changing any other joint position. So doing that without letting the spine fall back, getting the spine all the way up nice and neutral, doing this, doing this. And so, you can do it on your back. 
happy baby is a, is a position that comes to mind for this. So even just pulling the knees in towards the chest, there's a little bit of hip flexion, play around in there. Move your knees around. See, does it always pinch? Does it always cramp? Are there places and areas where it doesn't? Could I train you know, an active happy baby rather than grabbing up for the feet, just taking the hands behind the legs, pulling the knees down, and sort of working up and down here with the legs without trying to move my pelvis or my spine. So I would say maybe start there. Start training your hip flexion on your back, training your hip flexion in a seat, and use this time to simply gather information rather than being like, I have to get it or it has to be perfect or something like that. Like toss any of that aside and say, let me gather information. Does it always cramp? Are there orientations to gravity where it doesn't cramp? Are there ranges of motion where it doesn't cramp and, or, or pinch? And then let me work there. Um, the other thing I would say is like kind of alluding to like what we had just discussed is like really learn those joint positions. Really learn the difference between hip flexion and spinal flexion. That's a big blurry spot in a lot of our um, me cognitive mapping of our bodies. And um, our body, our brain just kind of tends to control this whole area as one big mushy, blurry clump. So the more that we can mm, isolate and then activate in the isolation, I think um, the more gains that we're gonna have. So hopefully that gives you, you know, if, it, if it's not like the most delectable, juicy answer in the world, I hope it at least gets you to the point where you can take a little bit more informed action. It's all trial and error, uh, all of it. It's all trial and error. So. Good luck. Uh, I hope that you find something that works. And if you do, let me know about it because I'd love to know where your little wins are along the way. Uh, the other question that I get, and then I'll leave it at that unless anyone has other questions in the chat, is a question that I was getting about the best way to learn complex positions. And a push-up would be you know, an example in, in my mind of a, of a complex position. Um, so I have a whole tutorial on push-ups uh, specifically on my YouTube channel that you can actually go into, but I think this is a really great question, and um, it, again, it gets into the idea that we are responsible for our bodies, and I know that sometimes we don't like to hear that because we want to sort of outsource that responsibility to someone else, to our group uh, fitness instructors, to our gym membership, and we're like, I'll just show up and I'll just do something and just wishful thinking that it's gonna make me feel better and, and, and work better. And I get it, we all have different areas of our lives that we're specializing in. We don't have time necessarily to go become an expert on human movement. Here's something though, learn your joint positions. I promise you, if you learn your joint positions, if you understand when someone says pronate your elbow, if you know what that means, and you know how to discern a pronated elbow from a supinated elbow, from a, a, a fl an extended elbow to a flexed elbow, if you understand what joint capacities your joints actually have, oh, my elbow moves in four directions, my shoulders move in six directions, my hips move in six directions. If we start to understand that, then all of our movements become components of joint positions. And we just add them all in and we say, oh, okay, cool. And when we can study them in ourselves and we can build up our capacity to, to know them and understand like what's going on in our body, then we can go into things like, oh, in a dolphin pose, I know that I have, um, that I have a, an issue pronating my, for my pronating my elbows to get my hands on the floor. Maybe I already know that about myself. So maybe I'm gonna say, oh, it's better for me to do dolphin with hands clasped like this so that I don't have to pronate my elbows so much. You know, little things like that can be absolute game changers in your practice. And it's really impossible for anyone to know that except for you and going through the trial and error. Now, how do I learn my joint positions? Well, I have a blog article on my website. I have a, actually a few blog articles about joint positions because I love them so much. So if you go into the blog, find um, range of motion, joint positions, anything like that will get you in the right place. But also my How to Move Your Body Yoga program on YouTube 
is a really great starting place. And yes, it is a little bit of a time investment. You'd probably, I, I haven't done the math on like how much all of these add up to, but it's maybe 10 hours. Like if we go through all of the different joints, we look at all the different joint positions, how to, how to distinguish them, how to build up our capacity to do them, what would be some exercises to develop those joint positions. So yes, it would be like maybe a 10 hour time investment of your life, but you can spread that out over a month. You can spread it out over a year. Uh, it doesn't, you know, you don't need to do it in a, in a finite amount of time. But the point is, is that this will help you kind of reclaim the responsibility and say, ah, I get it. I'm the one who has to do this. No one else is going to do it for me. Everybody who learned how to move their body, who learned how to do, go into a handstand or do something complex, they in some way, shape or form under, have some understanding of their joint positions. And in my experience, the more nuanced your understanding is of your joint positions, the more nuanced your understanding is of all these different complex movements. So two questions. I hope that that uh, uh, just gets like the juices going in your head a little bit. And um, it's been a pleasure moving with you this morning. Our next live stream is going to be next Wednesday, Ugh. August, what's today, the 12th? So that would be like the 24th, maybe? Uh, no, I'm sorry. What's 12 plus 7 is 19? 21, thank you. <laughs> so it'll be next Wednesday, the 21st, again at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, I have a link to donate below if you feel like donating. Uh, we have one-time donations, and we also have monthly contributions on our Patreon, where you also get access to some exclusive content. So thank you all so much for joining today. I'll see you right here next time.